Welcome to the official Global RPH YouTube channel. If you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button to stay updated with our latest videos. Whether you're looking for medical insights, the latest healthcare trends, or just some fun educational content, there's definitely something here for you. This video explores current clinical approaches to managing spike protein-induced pathology, particularly in the context of COVID-19 and its variants. It provides a comprehensive overview of therapeutic strategies based on the latest evidence aimed at healthcare professionals. The video discusses various treatment modalities, their mechanisms of action, and potential benefits and risks. Review our related blog article for additional details. The spike protein of SARS-CoV-2 has been identified as a key factor in the pathogenesis of COVID-19. As our understanding of the virus and its effects on the human body has grown, so too has the need for effective therapeutic strategies to address spike protein-induced pathology. This video aims to provide healthcare professionals with a comprehensive review of current clinical approaches to managing these conditions. The spike protein is responsible for the virus's entry into host cells, and it plays a significant role in the immune response to SARS-CoV-2 infection. However, it's also been associated with various pathological effects, including endothelial dysfunction, coagulation abnormalities, inflammatory responses, and even autoimmune reactions. Understanding these pathological mechanisms is crucial for developing effective therapeutic strategies. Now, moving on to therapeutic strategies. First up, let's look at antiviral therapies. Antiviral medications aim to reduce viral load and limit the production of spike proteins. Some examples include remdesivir, which is an RNA polymerase inhibitor that has shown efficacy in shortening recovery time in hospitalized patients. There's also molnupiravir, an oral antiviral that introduces errors into the viral genome during replication. And then there's Paxlovid, a combination of nermotrelvir and ritonavir, which has demonstrated effectiveness in reducing hospitalization and death rates. Immunomodulatory therapies are designed to regulate the immune response and reduce the inflammation that comes along with spike protein-induced pathology. For instance, corticosteroids like dexamethasone have been shown to reduce mortality in patients who need oxygen support. Interleukin-6 inhibitors, such as tocilizumab and cerilumab, have demonstrated efficacy in lowering mortality and shortening the time to recovery for certain patient groups. And JAK inhibitors, like baricitinib and tofacitinib, have shown some real promise in reducing progression to severe disease. Anticoagulation therapies have become an important part of treatment strategies due to the coagulation abnormalities linked to spike protein pathology. Low molecular weight heparin is commonly used for both the prevention and treatment of thrombotic events. Meanwhile, direct oral anticoagulants are being studied for their potential role in managing COVID-19-associated coagulopathy. Moving on to monoclonal antibodies, these therapies target the spike protein directly, neutralizing the virus and potentially reducing its pathological effects. Therapies such as the casirivimab and imdevimab combination, sotrovimab, and betalovimab have shown efficacy in reducing hospitalization and death rates, especially when they're administered early in the course of infection. ACE2-based therapies focus on angiotensin-converting enzyme 2, which is the primary receptor that SARS-CoV-2 uses to enter cells. Therapies targeting this pathway include recombinant human AC2, which may act as a decoy receptor by binding to spike proteins and preventing them from entering cells. ACE inhibitors and angiotensin receptor blockers, which were initially controversial, are now considered safe and potentially beneficial for COVID-19 patients when used for appropriate indications. Supportive care remains a cornerstone of managing spike protein-induced pathology. This includes oxygen therapy, prone positioning, and mechanical ventilation when necessary. It's also important to manage fluids and electrolytes, as well as provide nutritional support.
Recent research has highlighted the potential of certain nutraceuticals and dietary supplements in managing spike protein-induced pathology. Vitamin D, which is known for its immunomodulatory effects, may help reduce the risk of severe COVID-19 outcomes. Zinc, an essential mineral, plays a role in supporting immune function and may have antiviral properties. Quercetin, a flavonoid with potential antiviral and anti-inflammatory effects, may help mitigate spike protein-induced damage. And N-acetylcysteine, or NAC, as a precursor to glutathione, may help reduce oxidative stress associated with viral infections. Melatonin, known primarily for its role in sleep regulation, has shown promise in addressing spike protein-induced pathology. Its antioxidant properties can help neutralize harmful free radicals produced during viral infections. Melatonin may also help modulate the immune response and reduce excessive inflammation, thanks to its anti-inflammatory effects. And some studies even suggest melatonin may have direct antiviral effects against SARS-CoV-2. Ivermectin, while controversial, has been the subject of some studies exploring its potential in managing COVID-19. The proposed mechanisms include inhibition of viral replication and modulation of host immune responses. However, its efficacy remains a subject of debate, and further research is needed to establish its role in treating spike protein-induced pathology. Colchicine, an anti-inflammatory medication that's traditionally used to treat gout, has also been investigated for its potential in managing COVID-19. It may help reduce excessive inflammation that's associated with severe COVID-19. Some studies have shown promising results in reducing hospitalizations and deaths, especially when colchicine is used early in the disease course. Statins, which are cholesterol-lowering medications, have been studied for their potential protective effects in COVID-19. These medications may help reduce inflammation and improve endothelial function. Some observational studies have suggested potential benefits in reducing severe outcomes in patients with COVID-19. Now, let's look at some additional therapeutic approaches. Targeting the ACE2 spike protein interaction has become a focus of recent research. Scientists are working on therapies that can disrupt the interaction between the SARS-CoV-2 spike protein and the ACE2 receptor. Peptide-based inhibitors are one approach. These molecules are designed to mimic the ACE2 receptor, potentially binding to the spike protein and preventing it from attaching to cells. Another promising area involves small molecule inhibitors, which aim to block the binding site on either the spike protein or the ACE2 receptor. Now, for severe cases, extracorporeal blood purification techniques are being explored. Cytokine adsorption devices can potentially remove excess inflammatory mediators from the blood, which may help manage the cytokine storm associated with severe COVID-19. Plasma exchange is another technique that might help remove harmful antibodies and inflammatory mediators, while also providing fresh plasma components. Bromac is a combination of bromelain, which is extracted from the pineapple plant, and N-acetylcysteine, or NAC. This combination has shown promising results in targeting the SARS-CoV-2 spike protein. For instance, Bromac at 250 micrograms per milliliter significantly decreased the number of infectious particles of the Omicron variant after 60 minutes of incubation. Now, looking at the cellular effects, flow cytometry analysis showed that Bromac treatment decreased spike protein expression in low granularity epithelial cells from tracheal aspirate samples. The mechanism of action of Bromac is thought to involve a couple of things. Mucolytic effects that break down mucus in the airways of severe COVID-19 patients. Direct action on the spike protein, which could potentially interfere with virus entry into host cells and possibly some effects on viral replication. However, further research is needed. 
These findings suggest that Bromac could be a promising therapeutic approach for severe COVID-19 cases, potentially complementing standard care. Emerging research directions include nanoparticle-based therapies, where researchers are exploring the use of nanoparticles to deliver drugs or even act as decoys for the spike protein. CRISPR-based approaches are also being investigated, with gene editing technologies showing potential to make cells resistant to viral entry. Combination therapies are currently being studied to determine the most effective combinations of existing treatments to address multiple aspects of spike protein-induced pathology at the same time. When it comes to long COVID treatments, as more is understood about the long-term effects of spike protein exposure, research is focusing on developing therapies for those persistent symptoms. These additional approaches highlight the diverse and rapidly evolving landscape of therapeutic strategies against spike protein-induced pathology. And as always, it's crucial for healthcare professionals to stay updated with the latest research and clinical guidelines when considering treatment options for their patients. Research into novel therapies for spike protein-induced pathology is ongoing. Some promising areas include nasal sprays and oral rinses to reduce viral load in the upper respiratory tract, inhaled medications to target the lungs directly, cell-based therapies including mesenchymal stem cells and novel anti-inflammatory agents. Despite the progress made in developing therapeutic strategies, several challenges remain. Evolving viral variants may affect treatment efficacy. Timing of interventions is crucial and can significantly impact outcomes. The long-term effects of spike protein-induced pathology are not yet fully understood. And access to advanced therapies may be limited in some healthcare settings. The rapidly evolving nature of SARS-CoV-2 variants may affect the efficacy of targeted therapies like Bromac. Translation of in vitro and ex vivo findings to clinical settings requires further investigation and careful consideration. Looking ahead, a phase 1b and 2 a clinical trial is planned to examine the mucolytic effect of nebulized Bromac in the airway as well as its impact on respiratory pathogens and immune alterations in acutely ill patients. Also, further research is definitely needed to clarify the exact mechanisms by which Bromac affects different stages of the viral replication cycle. Investigating the potential of Bromac against other coronaviruses and respiratory pathogens could Establish it as a platform technology with broad antiviral properties. Additionally, exploring the potential synergistic effects of Bromac with other antiviral or immunomodulatory therapies could lead to more effective treatment strategies for severe COVID-19. Managing spike protein-induced pathology requires a multifaceted approach combining antiviral, immunomodulatory, and supportive therapies. As our understanding of SARS-CoV-2 and its effects on the human body continues to grow, so too will our ability to develop targeted and effective treatment strategies. Healthcare professionals must stay informed about the latest evidence and guidelines to provide optimal care for their patients. Thanks so much for watching our global RPH production. If you enjoyed the video and found it helpful, don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe to our brand new YouTube channel. We're bringing you a dynamic mix of content across a variety of topics, so there's always something fresh, engaging, and insightful just for you. Your support means the world to us. It helps us grow and keep delivering exciting, high-value content. Stay tuned because the best is yet to come.